Hey everybody, this is Andrew Brown and I'm doing the Google Clout Challenge and I've already completed uh, out of order. I did one and five, so I'm on to, uh, I, I'm saying one because it's one out of 10. I know it says Google Cloud Set 2 because there was a Google Cloud Set 1, which was the Google Cloud Original Challenge, which was like something back in May or something. And so this is a new series where there's 10 new challenges uh, where they're just releasing one a week. Uh, and so we're on to the second challenge here. And so I did pretty good on the first one because it was my own challenge that I submitted. So I'd hope that I could do it. And this one was uh, very similar, but it was um, putting into BigQuery. So uh, both on Spanner, but let's go take a look at this one. I wonder if this one's Spanner as well. No, it's event-driven cloud functions. I love doing serverless. So this one should be really, really fun. So what we need to do is enroll in the quest as per usual. And uh, what I'm gonna do is um, start the lab. I just don't wanna wait. So I'm gonna start the lab here and we'll start reading the instructions. So it says, in this challenge, you will create a cloud function that is triggered by cloud storage event. The cloud function provided when linked to a cloud storage trigger on a cloud storage bucket should upload the event metadata for the cloud function to cloud uh, uh, function to the storage bucket. Doesn't sound too hard, looks like a fun challenge. So I'll open a new tab incognito. Um, because I find that's a lot easier to work with. We can see we have some previous tabs here. And we'll make sure that this is the right student, so 100, okay? And I want this to be my main screen, so I'm gonna drag this, these instructions off screen here. And then what I'll do is bring this back on over. We'll expand this, and then I'll bring my password in here for my temporary environment, and we'll paste that in there. And, uh, you know, we'll just read a bit here. So the source code for the cloud function is provided in a folder named source in the cloud storage bucket. So they already have the code for us. So I'm gonna assume we have to download that or open it up. So what I'm gonna do is make a new tab because right away, if we're gonna do any coding, we should probably open up Cloud Shell um, so that we can work in that environment there. And so I'm gonna hit continue here. Cloud Shell is a way that we can have an editor that gives us kind of like a Visual Studio Code editor. I don't know if it's the same thing, but it works pretty much the same way. And we're gonna make our way over to cloud storage because they said there was something over there waiting for us. So we'll go over over there. And we'll give it a second to load and we can see source code folder. So it must be this one here. And we have a couple of files. So what I'm gonna do is uh, download these files. I'm gonna download them individually because I don't want them to be zipped. Oh, nice, it opens up in a new tab. That's really nice. And um, what we'll do is just name these files. So we have main.py. Well, we might not even need an editor. Let's find out first what we need to do. So you must copy this code into a folder in a Cloud Shell. Oh, already on it. <laughs> okay. So it looks like I know what I'm doing. Okay. So we'll say main.py. We'll give it a second. Close these tabs. Sometimes those interfere. Sometimes it's unresponsive when it first starts out. Don't worry about that. Just hit new file a few times. Come on, Cloud Shell. You can do it. I believe in you, Cloud Shell. That's okay. If, if it gives you some uh, buggery, we'll just click it twice. Oh, here it is. Okay. Sometimes there's a delay. It's not a big deal. Uh, doesn't happen all the time, but uh, it just seems to be happening as of late. So we'll do main.py. I'm assuming that's what the name of the file is. And we will go over here and copy this code and we will paste this code. There we go. Now there's some instructions. I, we probably have to replace some stuff here. Maybe not, maybe we just pass in parameters. Looks pretty simple, like it's uploading some files. Um, we'll need the requirements.txt for sure. So I'm just going to check boxes individually. So we'll say download. If there's like a neat way of copying over to Cloud Storage, that'd be great. Very simple. Uh, didn't know that's what it was called, requirements. Uh, requirements.txt. We'll go here, we will paste that on in there. We will save it. Uh, requirements, that looks correct to me. Okay, so um, yeah, I think I spelled it right. You know what, just to be sure, I'm dyslexic, so <laughs> like literally I'm dyslexic. And so I just do not trust anything that I type. So we'll say, Next. I just want to rename the file. Why can't I rename it? Oh, there's some leading space. Okay, great. So those are now named correctly. Let's go back to the instruction. So it says in the lab, you deploy the cloud function uh, trigger. Um, so create a new bucket called this. 
Hot bucket. I like the name hot bucket. I don't think we're supposed to select the, the period there. Just make sure you don't grab that period by accident. We will make a new tab here. Probably have cloud storage behind here. I don't know, but we'll make a new tab. And uh, I haven't been making good use of this home page, which is really good. So we'll go to cloud storage here. I really like it as a default page out of all the providers. Uh, and we'll name that bucket there. We'll hit continue. Um, what region? Good question, good question. Because I would think that if, we're, if it's gonna be in a region, it has to be in the same place. Do you have to, when you create a cloud function, do you set a region? All things that I should know, because I make courses, but I don't. I don't know anything. I, f I remember things the minute before and I shoot the video twice and then you think I know it. So I'm gonna just go here. I just wanna double check here. Yeah, we do cho choose a region. So just to be safe, I'm gonna choose, uh, we'll do it US, that's fine. So multiple regions is fine because it'll work in all regions. Um, standard's fine, uniform is fine. This is fine, okay? And I just wanted to make sure that was correct. So I would think that there's some way to trigger, make a trigger. We'll figure that out here in a second. So create a cloud function using the sample code provided and deploy it to the trigger on Google Cloud object finalize event on cloud storage bucket you created. Okay, that's fair. So we'll go over to here and uh, what kind of function? First gen or second gen? Um, I remember second gen being really nice. I really liked first uh, second gen ones because I think they run on cloud run, but it's not specifying which one. So since the other one's in preview, I'm going to assume it's gen one. And uh, I'm hoping that we're right. Okay, I think we'll be okay. So create a cloud function using the sample code, but what do you want us to call, us, call the function, anything? Does it matter what the name is? You must copy the code in a folder, Cloud Shell, in this lab and deploy it as a cloud function triggered on the Google storage object finalize event. It doesn't say what the name has to be. I'm gonna name it the same as the bucket, okay? And do US East one. I know like central's fine, I just don't. No, oh, we'll do central. I just feel bad if we don't do Iowa because that's like Iowa is where uh, you'll save energy, right? Um, Let's take a look at what we can do here. So yeah, trigger will be cloud storage. And they said they wanted to be on storage object finalize. So finalizing here, we will choose the bucket. There's probably like a clever way to uh, do this from, oh, there's nothing in my bucket. Create a, oh yeah, that's fine. Select a bucket, select that bucket. Uh, we don't need to retry, it's fine. And we will look at some of our settings here. So we have 256, 60, that's fine. Runtime service uh, account. Service account that the function will assume as its identity. By default, it will automatically use the default app engine service. I think that's totally fine. Uh, we'll go to build, that looks fine to me. Connections, that's fine to me. Just double checking everything. I think everything's fine. I don't know if we need any runtime uh, variables because how would it know what bucket and stuff? I feel like we'd have to pass that along as environment variables. Let's go take a look at the code because the code will probably indicate to us what we have to set. Uh, so that's there. Yeah, that's fine. We'll look at it in the editor. So in here, we have Google Cloud, storage, storage client, bucket names. So the bucket name is here. Maybe the bucket name is being passed along in the bucket event data. Yeah, it probably is. But it is expecting something called cloud FN output. So maybe maybe we need to upload a file named that. So I think we're fine for that. We'll go ahead and hit next. I just figured we had to set an environment variable. So here's our code. It didn't seem like we had to edit anything. So I'm not sure why they told us to do that. Oh, we wanna do... Um, uh, Postgres. Probably there's a, like a clever way to do it from the command line from Cloud Shell. I just don't know how. Ah, so here's our requirements. So we'll just be silly about it here. We'll grab this. We'll paste this in here. 
and we will go here. Easy peasy. And we'll paste that in there. Um, the entry point is cloud function. I would think that's cloud function is the entry point. Does it tell us here? Entry doesn't say anything. This is just me reading the code, you know, like it has to be that, that would make sense. So we'll hit deploy. We didn't even need Cloud Shell. We could just copy it directly into there. And that's gonna go ahead and deploy. Um, and so to trigger it, we need to upload a file. So uh, create a file, create a function, trigger the Cloud function by copying any file to the Cloud Storage bucket you created, any file. Note the files with JSON extension will be ignored by the function. This is to prevent it to recursively triggering itself. Okay, that's fair. So we need to upload some kind of file. Um, so, I mean, we could just make a new file in our Cloud Shell, so we're not making a waste of it. So we'll say hello.txt, and we'll say hello Google Cloud for fun. And we will download this file and this will be the file that we upload. Okay, um, so we'll go over here. We'll just make sure this gets deployed first. The timer sometimes dies on us here. I don't know why it does. It's totally fine though. I think we have enough time. We'll just refresh. Yeah, we're fine. We got nine minutes. Confirm that the expected JSON metadata file is created in the cloud storage bucket. Yeah, okay, so we're just waiting for this to generate. And while that's going, let's just keep reading the code to make sure we didn't mess anything up here. Um, so if it's not a JSON file, so it ignores everything but JSON file, get the bucket name from the event data. That's the name of the blob, uh, blob data. Dump the event data into a, uh, a variable called events. Pass it to upload. I'm not sure why they named these in uppercase but that's totally fine that they did that. Make a connection to storage accounts, get the bucket, um, set the blob destination, have a blob, upload the string blob. So yeah, I don't think we have to modify that. That's pretty straightforward. So we are just waiting for our function to deploy. So it is deployed. So now we need to trigger it. And all we have to do is upload a file. So that should be pretty easy. So we'll go over to our bucket. Mm, that's the source bucket. We want to go to this bucket here. Click and do it. And I will upload our hello.txt file that we downloaded. Okay, and go to our cloud function. I'm just wondering how do we observe that it is triggered? Maybe go to triggers. Doesn't say here, we'll go to logs. I'm not sure how often the logs update, so. Even if it even if it has triggered, it might take, well, I guess it has to spin up first, right? So we have to wait for that. And then uh, the other things here. Come on, function. I mean, maybe metrics would tell us something. Because like, it would show like invocations or something. Yeah, we definitely uploaded that. Refresh. Let's double check our trigger. Sorry about the coughing there. So yeah, it should uh, it should just work. Okay, so we're getting some information. Function execution started. So it executed a function. Um, I mean, we didn't really have any logging in here, so that's why we don't see anything in our file. Like you don't see any like puts or prints. So maybe we'll just check our bucket. 
There it is. We'll open its co sorry, we'll open the content of it. Looks good to me. Um, so we'll go and see if we complete this challenge. Nice. Okay, I like that challenge. That was fun. Okay, so I've completed another challenge. Oh, I keep forgetting there's a scorecard. I never opened that up. Let's open my scorecard and look at, take a look here. So we're good. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. But anyway, I definitely completed this challenge, so I'm all in good shape. And I'm going to go ahead and end the lab. And we will submit. Great. Loved it. So there you go. There is the event-driven cloud function challenge. I will see you in the next one, okay?